So I associated them being dickheads mm. and the action with being sinful. I was like, well, that's what it is. I, I butt heads with those dudes, you know, and they were all like footy players and rugby players yep. and stuff like that. I played soccer and volleyball and did musicals. So like, you know, let's say the word gay got thrown around into my face a few times. Yeah. And eventually I was like, man, all right, fuck this, I'll come back. You know, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in. So instead of like getting in fights or being a bit of a cheeky dude, I wrote a, like an open letter. <laughs> we were all still on MySpace. So, yeah. you know, I'm not putting an open letter on MySpace because no. I've still got Usher playing Yeah in the background. Yeah. Like we're not, we're not on, we're not on the full social media. And I wrote this letter and it was pretty much just, there's two types of people in this school. There's people that want to learn. There's people that want to throw sticks at each other at, at recess and like go like finger people on the weekend and get chlamydia and yeah. you know, like be sick. And I like, printed it off. <laughs> like that's like that's the level we were at. Printed it off, handed it to a couple people and then emailed a couple copies. Did you have your name on it? Uh, yeah, I wrote my name on it. I didn't write. I didn't call anyone out. Okay. I wasn't like this person, this person, this person. I was like, as a collective, like here's a choices for everyone. You can either be like this sort of person, or you can be like this sort of person. What grade was this? This was like the the last day of school. Okay, I was like, I'd had enough the night before last day of school. So I got up my Hunter S. Thompson bullshit <laughs> and just like guns ordered out by like third period there's 60 dudes outside of my class like classroom going Bore! i was like i think it's like six o'clock last night i was like I'm already in bed like red like i'm like i'm ready i'm ready to just like watch some modern family just fall asleep modern family how good yeah and then my sister came over with her boyfriend and then the baby and so now it's like 10.30 in the living room, a couple of glasses of wine. My whole family's screaming at each other because we decided to play the 1% club. Like, you know, the Jim Jeffries thing? We're like, let's watch it and see who's the smartest. Oh, that did not turn out well. <laughs> yeah, it's just the whole family's fucking like yelling at each other. Oh yeah, it was bad. But yeah, we, we played we played the 1% the club like the Jim Jeffries thing. Yeah. And like one of my sisters like, no, we all need a paper and a pen and we've got to write our answers down so no one yells it out. And then somebody else copies so we can figure out who's the smartest. And I'm like, we don't want to play this game. Like you're, hey. you're 17 and arrogant. And like, <laughs> yeah, they want to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the only reason most people like want to do it, let's do it official with all these rules. Yeah, yeah, us, yeah. I reckon I can take it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. She's like, I'm, I'm projected to get this T, T E R. I'm the smartest in. The, I'm like, you're seventeen. Oh, T E R. I remember what it's like to be seventeen. You know, I yeah. thought I was the smartest too, but I was a fucking idiot. Yeah, like you we are. We all were. We all were. <laughs> and yeah. So about halfway through the game, I'm done with this. You're all talking while I'm trying to listen to the questions. I'm like, all right, cool. So <laughs> have you ever tried playing Monopoly with them? She fucked up. We like, there's too many of us to play Monopoly. Oh yeah. Because it's like, you know, there's like seven of us all up. Is it the same dad as well? Yeah, same dad, yeah. Yeah, Ken, Hustler. So, Ken, yeah, Kenny and Nikki. Um, and like, I, I, call them, I call them Kenny and Nikki. I don't call them. Mom and dad. I don't call them mom and dad. Because <laughs> like when, we, when we grew up, I grew up like in my, like Nana's house. When I was learning to talk, like my mom and dad, they were like building a house, like way out, like in England. And so it was like my mom, my dad, my uncle, uh, my my granddad, my nana, and me all in like this small house. So everyone was called my mom and dad, Nikki and Kenny. And so I just called them Nikki and Kenny. And then, because obviously I was called them Nikki and Kenny, my sister Georgia, she called them Nikki and Kenny. And then Darcy called them Nikki and Kenny. Um, and then we moved out here, and there was two more here, Sonny and Teddy. And they kind of, I think they call my mom Nikki, but they call Kenny dad. Yeah. So they, they call him dad, which which I find stupid amazing i'm like <laughs> we're recording all this right yeah. sweet yeah sweet. yeah yeah i don't yeah i'm like it's good stories good stories to start with yeah um all right we'll, we'll wait for ryan because he's gonna go across the cameras yeah you gotta stream we'll, this back to the kremlin yeah bro. we're gonna we're gonna add all that <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> add all that in that could be the start that's yeah. hilarious i'm i'm not like recording anything, I'm just DJing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been solitaire. Yeah, He's yeah. just on there going. All right, I'll do the formal intro right now. Yeah, and send it. Good luck to you editing all of that intro there then. What's what's the intro? Big ups to Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Big ups Putin. 
Josh? <laughs> Down with the crane. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Vlad? Welcome home. Can't wait for the sleeper coat to come in so I can finally get out of this place. Just kidding. I like it here. It's not too bad. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We're on the podcast. Uh, it's a public holiday here on the Monday, WA Day, and we're joined by uh, someone not from Australia and myself, so it's a, another ethnic affair. We've got Rory Lowe, uh, a funny guy. He's uh, been around for a while, over east sometimes, and uh, yeah, he's here to help promote his tour, national tour, and also to talk shit and uh, some other stuff. Yeah, I'm mainly here to talk shit. I think, I think the promo is more of a, it's, it's more of a, a catalyst <laughs> or a little reaction afterwards. Yeah, exactly. That's how I get people on. Like, yeah. I've got something. I've got eyeballs. Well, so, I haven't seen you in like in ages. It's been a and while. Then, and then we were out on Friday and, yeah. I, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then, because <laughs> I, I got him banned on t- off TikTok. <laughs> Oh, night. all right. Yeah, you're the, okay. You're the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were saying, was so, it your bum crack? But it wasn't even my bum crack. It was just like one cheek. Yeah, it was. Yeah, just you just pulled your pants down, walked around with your jocks, and I was like, well, this is a this is safe because bikinis and yeah. stuff. But no buttocks. No buttocks. As, no buttocks. No cleftal horizons. Yeah, no. but I feel like you're not allowed. You're not allowed female booby or male butt by the sounds mm. of things. Like, but you're allowed male booby. And female butt. And in yeah. 2023, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, because it doesn't. you could have identified as a, yeah. a female for that moment. Yeah, my ass, I my ass identifies as a very, very skinny woman. That's what it is. <laughs> my ass identifies as Paris Hilton in the 90s. <laughs> so, so it's uh, real horny. Yeah, <laughs> it's real. It's real good. It's real good. So you're you're here. Um, you're well. Let's go back. You were talking about your family before. When did you move here? I moved here in. When did the towers go down? 91. Uh, <laughs> 91. No, that's my birth year. Um, oh, 20, 2001. I think it was just after. Yeah. It was just after that. It must have been about six oh, months yeah. after after 9-11, I think. So Coincidence. Been, yeah, 2002. Yeah. Early 2002. Um, and yeah, I think I spent one. I think I was, I was supposed to go to high school in England, um, but the year system here is different. So you have over here, you have one more year yeah. in primary school. So I had to like repeat the year of primary school. Um, but then I graduated, when I graduated high school, I was only 17. Yeah. So I have no idea what happened there. Yeah. No, most, most people graduate at 17 back then. And then what happened later was the year sevens, they put them into high school, which is stupid. Yeah. And then- and then you graduate. Where it depends on what half of the year you're you're born. Yeah, if you're born true. late, you're going to be older than everybody in your year group. Yeah. They said, you know what, stuff it. If you're born in the calendar year normally, it doesn't matter. We're going to split it halfway down, and we're going to go half and half to the start of the year. Yeah, I don't understand why they do that, man. And like, I got so confused because I start I started uni when I was seventeen. I was still seventeen when I started. Oh, what did you uni. study? I, said, I have masters in architecture. <laughs> There's a bit of a there's a bit of a uh, intelligence uh, with the comedy, which helps. <laughs> I like shapes. I like <laughs> shapes and drawn windows. <laughs> so you didn't want to pursue that further? Um, not really. Like my aim, like while I was at uni, I was like, I want to. By the time I get the degree, I want to never have to use it. Okay, that was like the aim. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good segue then, because a, a lot of my followers, a lot of the audience, uh, are the kids who are about to embark into that journey. And they're like, oh, we're not sure if we want to do this or not. Yeah, man. I feel like kids these days, it's it's such a weird thing. Yeah, it's you know like they I mean? have to do it, but they don't. Yeah, because because like So how come you did it? I did it um because I think mainly I did it just because my parents told me to do it. Okay. But um I'm really glad I did it. Why is that? Uh the, like the things that it gives you, like like the degrees, like whatever, but like just the sense of like community that you get from like uni is like that's probably my favorite thing like all my best friends came from uni like because yeah. you, you go to high school you don't get to pick who your friends are you're just like thrown into a jungle of just horny violent little people and they're just like let's see who has the hierarchy you know and so you just kind of get pushed into like small social groups what did you sit in high school in social groups oh man i got in a lot of trouble in high school hey we'll get uh, we'll, <laughs> okay. we'll get to that dude. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that yeah i got <laughs> escorted off the premises by the principal on the first and last day of high school um respect but Just- <laughs> yeah the community friendship uh for for uni plus like you like you get exposed to different things 
like different like ways of thinking and different like critical analysis and different social groups and you get to find yourself a lot more I find which is a lot better yeah. you know I feel like if you didn't go to uni you just kind of like walk into the world and it's like it's quite big and you can easily get lost yeah but I feel like it, if you're going to uni you you kind of you get to hand pick things that you like you know, I want to do philosophy or I want to do, you know, art major or I want to, you know, do finance for some reason. And then you get to like meet like-minded people and then you get to be more like who you are. You yeah. get to find out more about yourself. Plus you get work ethic, like, which is like necessary. Because I don't think you get that from just going on AI and going, make me a photo of this. Man. Yeah. No, it was the same with uni because i got a teaching degree as well. And it's like I... I, I realized, okay, shit, if I fail this unit, I have to repeat it and waste $1,000. Whereas in oh, high yeah, school, dude. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I think my, dude, I think my, fuck, I think my units for, for architecture, I think they were five or six grand a unit. And so, like, I don't even know what my hex debt is, but oh, it's not getting paid off. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Every time it's like, hey, you got to pay your tax or whatever. It's like, do you have hex? I'm like, do I? Like, you tell me, you're the yeah, department. You're, you're the computer. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I love Judy, man. Uni is like one of my favorite times. And like, like, I, like so my best friend I met at uni and like, like music, like became like a huge thing while I was the, like at uni and like, you know, that's when you start like experimenting with like alcohol and stuff. Cause I was like, I was mad Christian. Really? Yeah, like I, I was super Christian, so I didn't drink or, or have sex or do anything until I hit uni, until I like turned 18. Like, I would go to like church. So it's like, it's like an Amish kid going to see the world and not yeah. coming back. Yeah, and it's all, it's, and it's all because of high school, because I, I went to, I went to Aquinas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I went to Aquinas and like, I was a little hoodlum when I came over from England. I was like skinhead. And I was like, you like fucking talking like that and like all the proper. <laughs> and and so, yeah, so I was like, I was wicked, wicked Geordie. Like, like, he like, why I'm on proper touch on with like birds and that. Like, I don't want to do that maths and that. And so I spoke like that at like 11 yeah. with a skinhead and then got here. And I was like, I want to be a surfer, you know, because I'm in Australia now. And I'm like 12, 13. Yeah, like, we actually have good weather. Yeah, I'm like, I want to be a professional surfer. And I was like, first thing I need for that. It's not a surfboard, it's long hair. <laughs> so I just grew my hair out as long as I could. Um, and then first day, first day of school, they were like, you can't come into school with that hair. So they drove me home. <laughs> they drove you home because your hair? My hair was too long. Jeez. Yeah, that's like one of the rules of the Aquinas. I don't know if they still have it, but they're like, yeah, your hair has to be like, you can't have a, a buzz cut, you can't have a one. It has to be longer than a one, but it can't be longer than your ears. And it can't touch, it can't go over your collar. Like this is like their rules, right? And mine was like shoulder length. And they're like, we can't have this. And so they drove me home, had to cut my hair. So I missed the first day of school. I was like, this is sick. I don't even need to go to this school. This is awesome. <laughs> so um, it wasn't a fact that you, uh, you know, said said something bad or anything. It was just, just nah, the way that you're- That came later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was, I was like, my whole family's like not Catholic. No one in my family's Catholic. And I had this RE teacher oh. called, called Paul Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Shout out Paul Kelly. Um, and he was just like the nicest man I'd ever met in my entire life. Like he was beautiful. He was like incredible, bro. Um, he was like one of the only people I've ever met that's a Christian that was like Jesus, you know? Like he's like, he was like- a, Did he have the hair? No, no. He was, he was Scottish and like he loved football and he just had like this incredible patience. Wait, 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 hang on. So they, they were a Christian, they were, they were religious. Yeah. And Jesus had the long hair. Yeah. But they didn't allow you to have long yeah, hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, they're like, yo, everyone cut their hair short and just every room you walked in, there's just this dude on the wall with like these luscious locks. And they're like, <laughs> you got to respect that man. That's who but you, you want to be. You can't be having his hair like that. That's yeah. not in it, no. Yeah. And so this dude was just like so nice. And like one day I was like, man, how can I be more like you? And he was like, following the Lord's footsteps. And just was, not his hair. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, that's what we're doing, man. So like I converted myself to Catholicism. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like went through the whole thing, like had confirmation. Did they dunk your head? Uh, no, I'd already been baptized. Okay. Cause you kind of got to be bapti baptized 
Because like that's how you get into schools. Yeah. Like if you're not if you're not bop baptized, if, you got, <laughs> if you're not baptized, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the Jamaican one. If you're not <laughs> baptized, man, you know what I mean. <laughs> they just so how, how do they know that hash, you've bro. been baptized? Do you have Dude, like you a, get like certificate oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you get like a full thing. Um, and so I confessed myself. I ate, ate the Jesus bread, drank the wine, became Christian, started going to church, and then I had this whole affiliation with like. You know the social groups in in school. I was like, man, if you're if you're doing these things, like going out and drinking and like going out and like like fucking people and doing drugs, I was like, that's bad. Yeah. You know, because the people who were doing it, they were all dickheads. So I associated them being dickheads mm. and the action with being sinful. I was like, well, that's what it is. You know. And so on my <laughs> and like I I butt heads with those dudes. You know, and they were all like footy players and rugby players yep. and stuff like that. Uh, and I played soccer and volleyball and did musicals. So like, you know, let's say the word gay got thrown around into my face a few times. Yeah. Uh, and eventually I was like, man, all right, uh, I'll, I'll, fuck this, I'll come back. You know, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in. So instead of like getting in fights or, or yeah. um, you know, being a bit of a cheeky dude, I wrote a, like an open letter. <laughs> <laughs> like, and this was before, like Facebook must have came out in what, like 2009. So this was like the year Facebook came out. Yeah. Like, like we were all still on MySpace. So, yeah. you know, I'm not putting an open letter on MySpace because no. I've still got Usher playing Yeah in the background. Yeah. Like we're not, we're not on, we're not on the full social media. Instagram's not even built yet. No. And so I like, I wrote this like, you know, open letter and it was like a page and a half long probably in like, you know, 20 font or whatever it was. Cause you're like, you know, 15, you're like, I just need to, to look bigger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know like, what you mean. Like, you need to write four pages. Like how big's the font, miss? <laughs> like yeah. double spaced. <laughs> yeah, double spaced, triple lines. Um, and I wrote this letter and it was pretty much just like, oh, look, there's two types of people in this school. There's people who want to learn. There's people who want to throw sticks at each other at, at recess and like go like finger people on the weekend to get chlamydia and yeah. you know, like be sick. And I, I like printed it off. <laughs> like that's like that's the level we were at. Printed it off, handed it to a couple people, and then emailed a couple copies. To Did you have your name on it? Uh, yeah, I wrote my name on it. I didn't write. It, I didn't call anyone out. Okay. I wasn't like this person, this person, this person. I was like, as a collective, like here's a choices for everyone. You can either be like this sort of person, or you can be like this sort of person. What grade was this? This was like the the last day of school. Okay. I was like, I'd had enough the night before last day of school. So I got up my Hunter S. Thompson bullshit <laughs> and just like gonzo it out. And uh, by like third period, like there's 60 dudes outside of my class like classroom going Rory, Rory, like, and they're like banging on the doors and like everyone's like what is going on and I'm like you know I'm like pretty much crying you know what I mean like you know I'm like what 16 17 I'm like I'm not ready for like I don't want to fight anyone you know I just wanted to tell you all to leave me alone you know it's like it's like me going, leave Britney alone <laughs> and um yeah, like like the they had to like sh pretty much shut the whole thing down, and like I had like a group of teachers like basically around me while like a mob of students was like throwing stuff at me, and they had to like take me out of school and they put me in the principal's car and drove me home. Um, and before they did that, they were like, "We need to figure out what's going on. Like, what is happening?" I'm like, "Oh man, I wrote this letter," and they're like, "Where is it?" And I'm like. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> like I have a copywriting out and you know, like I'm reading it to the principal and as I'm reading it and the whole thing is basically like, if you don't study and you play footy, you're an idiot and you can't spell and you're not going anywhere. And like, you're going to be like, you know, 40 and you're not going to have a job and like, you're a piece of shit. And I like, and I was like, well, I'm going to study really hard and get an amazing job as like an engineer. And I'm going to drive a Ferrari to like the, the, the reunion. And yeah, like twat of a child. Um, and there's like spelling mistakes all through the thing. Like I can barely get through it because I wrote it in anger. It makes no sense. Do you still have it? <laughs> Somewhere, man. Like my, oh my mom God. told me, she was like, I've still got that thing. I'm like, I've, I, I would love to read it because it would relic. be hilarious. Because yeah. yeah. it just wouldn't, it barely makes sense. It's art now. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's a <laughs> man, I, I would, would never want to advocate bullying, but 
Well, you deserved it. Was, it. <laughs> it was like it was like it was a response to to bullying. Yeah. Like it was more the other way around. Like I didn't go out after him. It was more like so much stuff had happened at our school with like people getting picked on and stuff like that. That like I was like one of the handball drama kids, you know, and like I was cheeky enough, but I wasn't cool because I didn't play like the f the footy or the rugby or the water polo or whatever. And so like there was a clash, mm. and so like. I picked on the people that picked on people. Oh, man. Like, I'm that. The, like you know, the, yeah. the Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The middle, yeah. Middle yeah. Man. We'll call him Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, year 10, <laughs> in year 10, I had the same shit. I, I was, I was uh, helping out all the year sevens that were getting bullied by the, the older kids or, you know, the yeah. bigger kids. I grew up in Kalgoorlie. Yeah. So there was a whole bunch of ethnic clashes there. Yeah. Um, but year 10, how we, our school was set up was it was- And you're already, what, 7-2 at this yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like so, yeah. So there was year 8s, 9s, and 10s. That was the middle school. And then year 11s and 12s had a separate campus. Oh, like, really? Nowhere near. And that was actually a good setup. I because think so. Because year 11s and 12s just could focus. Yeah. But when I was in year 10, I figured out that um, I could get away with so much more. This is my last year at this school. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. And so I literally did nothing. And I was, uh, there was a boys to men's program that they had. And oh, um, I thought you were talking about the band for a second. I was like, I met them. <laughs> <laughs> I met boys to men. Uh, I remember, I remember nice, guys, was, nice guys. I remember in maths class, we'd be sitting in the back playing cards or something. Uh, you know, that's maths. Yeah. And uh, like, I swear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the boys to men's program, because there was uh, the, like most of the school was actually indigenous. Yeah. And they had a boys to men program for them. And you could only get in it if you were indigenous. Okay. So, so they had segregation still. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's I, crazy. I, I only think about like, it like that. Uh, like, uh, support segregation. Yeah, it was yeah. a support. It's a thing. positive thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a yog. Get yeah. the no, back. it was like, yeah. So anyway, okay, the, boys to men, the boys to men thing was called over the PA. Yeah. And uh, we would all just stand up, like, we were all involved. Like, we just, we, and we just all left and we did it so often that and everyone just thought, oh, he's in our program. Yeah. And we just left and wagged. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I never really like ditched school. I was never like a ditcher. Cause like I said, I, like I, I kind of like calculus, physics, chem, like I did all like all of that crazy shit. Mm. Never did well at it, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was always like about like, let's do this, let's do this. Like that's the only way you're going to get by is if like you're smart. Yeah. And then. And then the mining boom happened. <laughs> and you're like, everyone that I was like, man, you're an idiot. You're not going to make any money. You're going to be on the streets. They were like, I'm 19 and I have three houses now. And you're like, oh, maybe I should have just dropped out and thrown sticks at people. Maybe that's what I should have done instead. <laughs> His yeah, glasses exactly. have negative gearing already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you finished school and then you went to uni. <laughs> went to and uni. Then you went, you graduated uni. When did you find the mic and start telling jokes? I actually did my first gig in high school. I did it for the uh, talent show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in year 12. This also might be another reason they didn't like me. <laughs> did that throw sticks? <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I did a bunch of jokes about like footy players and stuff oh, like, yeah. in my thing. And like I was dressed as like like a, a, a cross between that like, Russell Brand and Noel Fielding at the time. Like I was hooked on Mighty Bush. So like... And this is when skinny jeans were like, you got called, you know, gay for wearing skinny jeans still yeah. as well. So like I had like these pink and bl black checkered skinny jeans oh. on. And like I used to, cause I liked my hair being long. I used to like, I'd pull my hair back with a, with a headband and then I'd like gel my hair forwards. So like my hair went back and then all the- Do you have a so, photo? I probably do. Please. You couldn't, you couldn't oh. tell, you couldn't tell, but like it was so long but no one knew it was long because of the way that I'd, I'd done it. And so I made sure that when I did the did the gig, I let it all down. So my hair was all down. <laughs> I was in these skinny jeans and I was like doing these jokes about footy players just being dumb. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, you know, they, they were they're awful jokes. Like they were really bad jokes. First gig I've ever done. And like, the jokes were like, oh yeah, you know, I don't understand why, what the number is on the back of a football jersey. You know, it doesn't make sense. What is it, your IQ? Like stuff like that. <laughs> You know, and like- way, way to read the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, again, same thing. Like people were furious. Like I had to have gone, have meetings with the teachers and stuff. Um, but like at the end of it, you know, like teachers would come up to me and be like, man, look, I can't, you can't tell anyone that I've said this. You can't like let anyone else know. 
And they pull me aside and be like, man, I just want to shake your hand. You said some things that I've wanted to say to these little motherfuckers for ages, dude. And I'm like, thanks, bro. I really appreciate getting respect from like a grown man at like, you know, like, like 16, yeah. 17. But like, I really wish I had more friends. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably had, um, you probably had the teachers all kind of like trying to hold their laughter. Yeah. And then all the kids were like, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Pretty much. <laughs> Um, and so that was the first time I ever did a gig. And then I don't think it was until I was like maybe 19, 20 that I actually did a gig like proper. And I did it at the Brisbane. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, That's where everybody loses their virginity these days. Yeah. And yeah. in comedy as well. Yeah. Especially here, man. Like it's, it's such a, it was, that was like one of the best rooms. Like when it was at like Shapiro's like back in the day, this mm. is before the comedy lounge was even built. Yeah. Um, so I did it there and I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty good. And then I think, uh, it wouldn't have been until I was like 20, 21 mm -hmm. that I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. This is cool. And so I was coming on to like the back end, the tail end of the, like, cause I, you have to get the masters. You got to do a, to get the masters in architecture. You got to do a bachelor of environmental design first. So I did the first degree. And then I reckon after I kind of finished the first degree, I went to America like saw some like massive comedians, saw like Chappelle, saw yep. like Jeffries before he kind of blew up and I think Flight of the Concords were massive at the time. This guy called Tony Woods, like, you know, everyone under the sun that I could watch. Uh, and I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is game. So from then I was like, I reckon I could do this. I'll just do this. Um, and so that last two years to do the masters, I think took me maybe four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a job out of it at all? Or? Um, no? I worked, I worked for a, a couple of people cause you have to get a job for three months as part of the yeah. masters. So kind of like a prac. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much like work placement or whatever. And so, um, I got a, a job working for a, a friend of mine who I used to play football with, um, called Joffy. Uh, and he was like doing, he's doing, very, very cool stuff. But it just so happened that his, he was working in like the head of the West Australian uh, Institute of Architects' office. So I ended up just getting pushed into like the best That's helpful. like office you could possibly be in. Um, and they, I think they, like they, when I walked in, the, the guy who was like the head of architecture in the whole of WA was like, you're very funny. I've seen you before. You're very funny. And I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, like the thing that I, that I should be doing, I've walked in there and I'm getting recognized for the thing that I want to do. And I was like, this is the best like outcome. This is exactly what I wanted from my life. Um, just I'm, I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, that was what, uh, three years ago now. Yeah. Um, and then moved over to Sydney to do gigs. And then since then, everything's been on the up and up. So just for people who are looking to do it, this as an art or any art as a full-time profession, how did you kind of, yeah, make your way into being able to do it full-time? Oh, pretty much, uh, <laughs> I want to say crying and sleeping on the street. That's, that's pretty much what, I, if you're going to do anything like artistic, it's going to suck. Like it's going to suck for so long and everything about it is going to be like the worst, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Like, cause like, I remember, I love this stuff, man. Do you love um, sparkling water? Oh, I love sparkling water. Love it so can you, much. Can you say it in the most British accent, please? I love sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you went from being homeless on the street crying. Well, because um, I mean, that's what it, that's what it takes, man. Like if yeah. you want to do, if you want to do anything artistic, I mean, I'm sure that there's 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 people that have been like, oh, I put out one song or I put out one thing and it's outliers pops. though, you know. Those are outliers. Like yeah. you don't make that. Like like it, like for example, one of my favorite musicians at the moment, uh, which you know the youngsters definitely know, is like Fred again. Fred again, right? Yeah. Fred again, who like just seems to have hit the scene in the last like six months, yeah, and has went from like no one knowing who he is to like selling out Madison Square Garden, and yeah. you're like, that's what I want. You know, I want that. I want to upload a video and I want to go straight to the top. No, he was making beats for Ed Sheeran, like like first album, second album. You know what I mean? I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, dude. So wow. he's been like he's been like making beats for like some of the best people in the world. And Ed Sheeran was making songs. He still does for, yeah. for big artists. Yeah, like, yeah. And so they've been doing this like in yeah. the background for forever. Like you look at Jack Harlow. Like Jack Harlow was like releasing mixtapes in like two thousand and 
Like he 14. Loved he loved it. Yeah. Like loved it. And so you just basically, you've just mm. got to love it. You know, you've just got to love it and you've just got to go, do I really want this? Yeah. Like, am I willing to go through like doubt and fear and hunger rejection. and rejection mm. and having to start again and having to fight with people I love and just to, to, to for, yeah. for not even the respect, but just for the opportunity to do yeah. it. Like the amount of times I would like scream like at my parents and at my friends and at like past girlfriends have been like, this is what I want to do. Like, stop telling me to do this other thing. Stop telling me I can't do this. Mm. And like, you know, you like, you, you'd, it, 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 you just want to give up and you just don't. And like, that's the thing I reckon about two years ago, I remember just being like, oh, like I can't afford, afford a coffee. I can't afford a fucking bus ticket. And then, you know, like four weeks later, you cop a gig and you're like, oh dude, I'm gonna buy a house. You know what I mean? Like, like I went from, like, I went from like, I think 2019, I was on like, I made 33,000 off comedy. Yeah. Right. Which I don't think is a livable wage. And then, and then, <laughs> and then the uh, whole world shut down without mentioning the word, cause I don't want this fucking podcast getting tagged by it. Yeah. But 20, yeah. 2000 to 2020 would have been like, nah, sorry. Yeah. You started, yeah. you started to get a little bit. Yeah. I started to get good traction. I, I got, I got some respect from like some, some big comics and I really started to start going and I, I did a theater show. I did Astor. I did my first theater show about, about two months before uh, the old Pandy Wandy hit. And um, I'd filmed it all. And I was like, all right, cool. I've got a, I've got an hour long special in front of like 600 people. Right. And I, I lost three grand on selling out the Astor theater. Like as I sold the whole thing out, I got a camera crew in and I lost money. How? Because it cost me so much, you know? To film, to produce Yeah, for yeah. film oh, and shit. tech. And I had Wolfie and Pinder open yeah. for me. And I was like, look, I'm like, I know what it's like to come up and not have the money. And like, now I have it. So I was like, I'm paying you 500 each for 10 minutes. Like, get up there. We're doing this. And then I got my like, you know, sales report in. It's like, you know, you sold like six, 700 tickets at like 30 or 40 bucks a pop. You've made like 15, 16 grand. All right, well, we're taking six for venue hire. I owe five to Matsu for, for filming it. And then I owe two two grand to the tech and the light guy for the, for the, the jobs that they did. And then I owe a grand out for the opening act. And then I've paid a grand worth of marketing and then a few other things on the side. And I was like, oh, I've lost like two or three grand. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, I've just achieved my my dream. Like I've I've just done a theater. Yep. I've achieved my dream. Uh, I got I got offered a gig at the Opera House. Wow! And I was like, "All right, let's go. We're moving to Sydney. We're like we got momentum. We're doing this. Like I just came back from the states, opening up for Bert. And I was like, "Oh, sick! Yeah." So like I'd just been on a private jet, like flying from like Vegas to Salt Lake City, and I went to America with like forty dollars. Again, I have no money. Mm -hmm. They paid me two hundred bucks a gig to gig in front of four thousand people, where like he's making you know crazy coin. But again, I know what it's like to have a theater yeah. and make no money. You mm -hmm. know, so I'm just happy to be there. He was so generous. He was so lovely. And I'm like, we've done it. We're ready. This is everything I've ever dreamed of. Let's go. Lockdown. Yeah. And then everything got taken from me. All the gigs got canceled. Didn't get to do the opera house. Just moved over to Sydney. Uh, you know, didn't really know anyone. Knew like two or three people sleeping on some guy's couch. Uh, and now I'm locked in the house, sleeping on this guy's couch. <laughs> so now I'm like, you know, in this house for like five months. And all I've got is this uh special recorded so i just started chopping it up putting it online that kind of blew up and then came out first first festival season back at fringe made made twice as much money in that month than i made the year before and i was like oh okay we're here you like, kept we're going good. yeah you kept going you kept turning up yeah well that, i mean like that's that's the main thing it's like like i'm i love rap music like <laughs> I love hip hop, oh, dude. I love hip hop so much. And uh, there's a guy called Nipsey Hustle who I really like. Respect, rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. <laughs> Pour one out for dead homies. <laughs> um, and he has they a- love he, sparkling water. Nipsey always loved Yeah, dude, I'm all about it, bro. Put some bubbles in my ting. <laughs> and he has he has this, like, the, the victory lap and, like, the marathon. And, and there's this great quote that he has. He's like, the only difference between me and everyone else is that I just didn't give up. Yeah. I just kept going. And like, that's the main thing. Like, if you want to get to a certain point, just don't give up because eventually you'll get there. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm also lucky because comedy, there's no age limit. 
you know what I mean? It's not like rap or like music where like you want, like people want to see some young, cool, pretty person doing the thing. Yeah. While comedy is like, dude, no one's really going to put respect on your name until you're 40 anyway. Yeah. You know, like you better get a divorce and like lose the house and like yeah, you go, better go, go through, through some trauma. So yeah. you have something to write it's about. It's funny. <laughs> it's got to be relatable in comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, while music, it's kind of like you've got to be bigger. Than the, than the moment almost, you know, like let's get on stage, give him lights, you know, put like some fireworks and pyrotechnics and people dancing and crazy <laughs> visuals, you know, and you look at the musicians with awe and then you go to a comedy show and you're like, dude, if you come out there being arrogant or like up yourself, the hell will, you get, you get the tone right. right. Yeah. You'll, you'll, yeah. you'll hear about it real quick. Yeah. So you got to get that tone right. So to 2021, you recovered? Yeah, 2021. Uh... I came out uh, of the old Pandy Wendy because um, we were because I was in Sydney for lockdown, so we were in lockdown for like five months, bro. Yeah. That was rough. Um, came out. Uh, I'd been writing heaps because I'd been doing nothing else because I'm in thing. I've been editing loads. So is that where you came up with the Peppa Pig thing? Well, I dude, I started doing that in 2014, I think. I want to say 2015. I started like messing around with that kind of stuff. So it, it would have been like five years before any of that wow. kind of took off as well. Because I think the first thing, I was doing Aussie Disney before I was doing Aussie Peppa Pig. Um, and then I just ran out of movies. Like I'd done, every, I think I'd done like 40 or 50 Disney films to the point that I started having to do them again. And so the first one I did was uh, Lion King. Yeah. And it was like Aussie Lion King. And it was like the at the start where it's like yeah and and, and I basically I changed the song to just yeah nah fucking yeah nah fucking what do you reckon can't <laughs> oh fucking what do you reckon yeah nah yeah nah yeah nah and it was just that and I remember I, that was the first one I, I I made a bunch of skits and stuff that I tried to do which I guess were like vines like early vine stuff but they never took off. I must have made about 20 of those things. They never took off. And then I made that one. And um, yeah, like over overnight, uh, my mate rang me up the next day. He's like, man, have you seen, have you seen your, your video, your Facebook video? And I looked at it and I was like, man, we got 20,000 views. This is crazy. We got 20,000 views in one night. And like, that's when like, you know, 20,000 views was still like, huge you know when now where it's like I mean, but you know what i mean like people yeah. now have got like 400 million followers yeah. like this was like ten thousand followers was like a huge deal so we had twenty thousand views i was like this is crazy i got twenty thousand views he goes no nah, bro and he sent me this link and like lad bible had picked it up and it had 3.6 million like in 24 hours and i was like yo and i was like all right cool let's start making more of these yeah and so i just kept making more of them i did aladdin and then i ended up like going all the way back to like fantasia and like robin hood and cinderella and i was just making everything i could and then um uh they all were doing well and i kind of ran out of movies and i was like oh man what do i what do i do now and i was like i'll upload some stand-up and that never really worked and then i did a couple of pepper pigs and they started popping and then when i was in the in the uh lockdown i was like i need money on broke i was like i'll keep making these and i was like oh maybe, maybe i'll make some merch for it and so i made some merch for these where i have no idea how i didn't get like sued, sued or yeah. stopped for this but i was just like pepper pig on there cunt <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. And I slapped that on a t-shirt and like, I reckon I sold like five or six stacks worth in like 24 what? hours during the pandemic. And I was like, yep, sick. We on. Um, and so I just made, I tried to make one a week, like through the whole, whole thing. And then that took off and then the stand up took off and I never put my Aussie Peppa Pig on TikTok. I only ever put it on Facebook and YouTube uh, and then I was like, maybe I'll make, I should make a TikTok. And I go to, I go to TikTok. I'm like, I'll make a TikTok. Uh, Robbie Little Comedy, you know, like all my other stuff. Uh, sorry, this username's taken. I'm like, wait, what do you mean it's taken? That's, that's me. And I go on there. Somebody had already started a TikTok, <laughs> taken all of my stuff off my YouTube and just put it up as their own shit. And I was like, this is crazy, dude. Someone's jacked my name out of my videos. Um, and so I had to make official Rory Law comedy. And then I started putting my stand up on it. And uh, first video again, like 1.7. Amazing. Um, and I went from like, 
in that five months while being in the house, I went from like 10,000 to a quarter of a million. Yeah. Um, and it was all from stand up. There was no Peppa Pig. So I had this weird kind of transitionary period where I was like, well, we've been doing this now. What first gig high school was 2009. Yeah. And popped in stand up wise 2021. So all, like almost 12 year gap since my first one. And so it's, you know, if you want to do the art thing and you want to do the thing, there's no overnight cheat code no, or anything no. you, you just gotta keep going and eventually you'll find a voice or you'll find a way to move in and you'll be like oh yeah yeah this is where we're at and oh. then people go oh where'd you come from <laughs> you're like bro i've been stood outside i've been stood outside in the rain waiting for you to open this door that's it and finally someone opened it up mm. and then you come in and you just you dry and out in the in the sunshine now yeah i've got a uh, sticker on my uh, lap um on my computer it says um it takes 10 years to become an overnight success yeah it's like always there and, you know, going through art and all that and just, just trying different things. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the more successful comedians, the ones that haven't hit huge yet, they're popping off on social media doing random shit. There's this guy called Ben. I forget what his last name is. He's an American dude and he trolls on Facebook. He makes like fake accounts in uh, for corporate businesses. Oh, I've seen this, seen dude. This yeah, dude? there was like one for like Domino's or Wendy's yeah, and yeah, like yeah. he commented on somebody else's stuff. He's like, you're a piece of shit or whatever it is. And like, they're like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna report this. I'm going to complain to like- uh, the- Yeah, he's customer service is yeah, sometimes- and then he makes well. a customer service yeah. account and goes, we don't give a shit. <laughs> like that stuff as well, you're like, that's what I love about like comedy like so much is it's just like, it takes, you've got to be so stupid to be a genius. Yeah. Or the other way around. You've got to be such a genius to be stupid. Like it's either way, that, those are the best Paris things. Paris Hilton's an example. Oh man, but it's like, not necessarily, I mean, I, I don't really dive too much into the, the, the like the, the, the Kimmy K's and the Paris Hilton's oh, and the Lindsay Lohan's and yeah. stuff. You know, but like when you look at like, like I, I love like Brooklyn Nine-Nine mm. and like Archer and like, you know, Rick and Morty, South Park, like these things which are so intelligent, but are so dumb. And I'm like, man, you've got to be so smart to make something this yeah, dumb. Yeah, the human center iPad. I'm like, how the fuck yeah. did you come up with that? Oh, dude, like the, the chat GPT one that they just came out <laughs> with, bro. So it's classic. It's one of those things just like, oh, like the 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 uh, Harry and- uh, Megan? Megan, oh, like that privacy was... world tour. You're like, the, and- <laughs> It's, and it's just like such crazy big topics that they challenge. And then they're like, all right, this crazy topic. It's so intense. All right, how many like fart j- dick jokes can we make? Can we fit in there? Yeah, it's like, oh, the gluten-free one. Remember oh, when the, the gluten-free one? The dick's one? blowing yeah. up. Your dick explodes yeah. and flies around the room <laughs> if you eat gluten now. You're like, bro, what an amazingly stupid way mm. to make fun of- A real a, shit. A very intellectual and like currently political issue. You're like, they're geniuses. They're yeah. absolutely geniuses. Geniuses. Um, but they always have, uh, I think it's the same with Rick and Morty, but they always have, the, the four boys, they always have opposed opinions so that before they get cancelled, they, they're always counter arguing it yeah. inside the episode. So they can't get cancelled because if someone came at them, I'm like, well, yeah, we addressed that in the, in the, in the thing. Someone was already offended in the episode. So you're that character. Yeah. So they, they did that very clever. It's, it's, it's so good, man. I love that stuff. Like I reckon South Park is the greatest like comedy piece of all time. <laughs> Man, I'm just spewing that they've the last two seasons have only been six episodes. Uh, uh, dude, I reckon every week I just go on Google and I'm like, is there a new episode? Like, is it when's it coming out? When's legit, it coming out? It's legit. But, and it's I don't even care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I could I would wait. Like I would wait, like I would watch one episode every six months if they released only one every six months and yeah. I'd be watching it the night it came out. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, they, they have a TikTok account and I, I, I see a clip. I'm like, fuck, I haven't seen this before. Oh, dude, when they're- Straight onto the internet, watch the whole episode. Yeah. Bro, have, have you seen the clips of them like doing the voices and oh, stuff yeah, behind? Oh, yeah, with his daughter? Oh, my Lord, bro. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's so good that this episode's already out. Like if you were doing like, like here's, here's us making this new video and it's him <laughs> like pretty much just like pulling his eyes back <laughs> and doing like an Asian voice into a microphone and then getting his like four-year-old child to be like, say, you're a stupid bitch. <laughs> and she's like, you're a stupid 
bitch. And it's just him cracking laughing. Yeah. You're like, man, if you did that now, put that on the internet, then it took that child away from yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. But like, it it's just funny. Yeah. And it's so perfect. Yeah. And the fact that like, it's it's what twenty six seasons now. I think the first ep the first mm. episode aired in the nineties. I think it was in ninety eight or ninety nine. Yeah. Maybe two hours to tail end ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jamie, pull that up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yeah, to have that consistently go mm. to where it's at now is incredible. Same with Family Guy. That they're still. They're still going. Yeah, I never really. There's still a new Family Guy. Yeah, there is still a new what? Family Guy, yeah, and their their new episodes are actually really good. Like yeah. they uh, they still take the piss, dude. The South Park episode about Family Guy, oh. like when they're like like the the walruses. Yeah, there's like a walrus or a manatee, like in a in a big tank, and with there's balls. just a bunch of balls <laughs> with topics on them, and it's just like cutscenes, and that's how they make the show. And it's like you've gotten like. You, there's two shorts battling for who's the funniest show and you've gone hey let's make a whole episode about how stupid the other show is and you're like the balls on you bro everybody wins so like, the exact opposite of like what a corporate battle with brands is like never acknowledge the competition yeah where they're just like yeah fuck them yeah. they're taking them on how Pepsi did it they're like and there's this cola brand and it's a distinct red and fucking white yeah. Coke can. It's just like, we know it's Coke, but I know you can't say that. You'll get sued. Oh, man. But yeah. But I talk about this every time we have a comedian on, um, how we're going full circle, right? So we're at PC now, real PC shit. Everybody's offended. Uh, Ricky Gervais says, stop saying that uh, this is offensive. Say that you're offended. This isn't offensive. You're offended. You can just say you don't like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but scroll uh, on, you know. But what I'm trying to say is we're going full circle, right? The comedians, especially like Andrew Schultz, like he's yeah. one of my favorites right now because he just goes, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And I feel like we're about to push through a barrier now where we're it's going to be okay again. I feel like – I don't feel like there was ever really an issue. Like, I, I mean, it, like there's certain – I think – I saw I saw a re I saw a really good mm. conversation. I can't remember exactly who it was talking about it. Uh, I think it might have been Seinfeld, uh, and he was he's talking about like political correctness, and he's like political correctness. And like, people go, oh, it's gone mad. You can't say anything anymore. And it's like what the problem is. I think with a lot of comics is when they start. You know, they watch Schultz or they watch Bill Burr or they watch like Jessel Nick or whatever, because most people's sense of humor like is quite dark at the start because it's the easiest kind of like knee-jerk reaction to get a reaction yeah so at least you do not, not in silence but like if you're going to tackle issues like race or like transgenderism or like anything that's like you know tumultuous to navigate through um you better be good enough to talk about it but you don't have the skills yet and so a lot of people come in and go, oh, you can't say anything anymore. It's like, yeah, you can say all this stuff. Like, you know, CK had the N-word joke. Like Schultz has had N-word jokes. Uh, Neil Brennan's had N-word jokes. Like so many white dudes have had N-word jokes. Yeah. And like, you know, they've also done transgender jokes. They've also done gay jokes, but they are good enough because they went through all the other stuff beforehand, like going to the shops or like my mom said this, or like, aren't kids the darnest? And they went through that whole process to get to a level where they were skilled enough to now tackle a very difficult subject. Mm -hmm. And so they can talk about it. But if you're just starting, like you're not good enough to tackle those subjects because they're heavy subjects. It's like, you don't go into the gym and just go, I'm doing a hundred kilos on the bench press. So you start with the bar and you got to work your way up to a you point. Do the reps. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think a lot of people go, oh, political correctness is ruining comedy. It's like, no, you're ruining comedy with your shitty comedy. <laughs> like, get better and then start like, and then tackle these big issues. Yeah. Um, Cause you can say anything, man. You just got to be not a dick. Yeah, it requires <laughs> skill and nu nuance. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, like, I mean, what was it? Let's just say, like, wokeism kind of kicked off in what two thousand and ten. Let's just say, proper, like, really started going there because we were all saying, calling each other gay and you know the f word and all that jazz, like, where we were in high school, and then we kind of left high school, and then you know, like, Me Too movement kind of kicked in, and there was all sorts of stuff going on, 
that was when like Tyler the Creator was about like OG Tyler, like where he's like talking about like killing himself and like like raping people and like like that's what his that's what his like content was when he was like when Bastard and Goblin and Wolf those first three albums were out and so. He was still doing that. Like he had the song Radical, which is like kill people, fuck, like burn shit, fuck school. That was the hook, you know? And like children are singing it. And like Eminem was doing what he was doing. Oh yeah. You know, there was like all these things. There's, there's examples throughout the whole of history of people during these times where people can't say anything, saying way more hectic shit than they were saying before because they were good enough to be able to do it. And there was also the market as well because people were like, well, I don't want to join that other thing i want to do this and pendulum swinging back yeah i think people are probably a bit fed up with the conversation you know um but at the end of the day i think it's all positive i think you know if you know the the whole message behind walkism and moving forwards was like hey guys maybe let's try and be nicer to everyone you know and i'm happy with that i think that's a good thing yeah like and if you're offended you're offended but you, you know, it's, sometimes it's nice to offend someone because then you get to look at your own self and go, oh, well, maybe, maybe some of my jokes are a bit like, on the nose. Maybe they do need work. Maybe I can look back at it. Um, I mean, there's some people that should just shut the fuck up <laughs> as well. You know, like there's a few people on Facebook. You're like, mate, you just get off Facebook. Go outside. Go, 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 oh, go eat Facebook. a cookie. Pat a dog. Yeah. You know, like. Go, go try be happy. I mean, like I, I go into the videos on Instagram and Instagram's an absolute war zone in the comment section. Yeah. Like people are savage. I don't look at comments. Eh? I yeah. look at my own comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'll look at them like, the, like I'm sometimes you can smell. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you can smell the comments when you, if you, you're like, oh, I, I'm going to go to the comments just to validate my thoughts. Yep, yeah. These people are pieces of shit like me. Um, but you go on TikTok, it's a little bit more. Safe, inclusive. Yeah. I mean, it isn't, it isn't like, I feel like TikTok is like every time you open the comic section, like it's only one side of an argument. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Like you open it up and it's either everyone going, oh my God, I love this. This is so amazing. Or it's just the other side where they go, you're a piece of shit. And it's just like, this isn't how you thought this was going to get a response. No. You know, like, and I put out a video a couple of weeks ago and it, it's done very well. It's like one of the bigger ones I've got at the moment. Uh, and it's about like pregnancy and like accidental pregnancy because that's one of my fears, you know. Um, and you scared of getting pregnant? I'm scared of getting pregnant. I, was, I mean, <laughs> anything can happen right now, you know. Twenty twenty is right. Um, but uh, like it's like about me, and my girlfriend, and like you know we get serious stuff. I'm like, do we want kids? Do we not want kids? And like my mom told me one time that two of us out of the five were accidents. So the whole joke's about accidental pregnancy. Did she tell you which ones? She doesn't. No, <laughs> she, she still hasn't. That's smart. Um, the first one and the last one. First one and the last one. Always, bro. That's what it is. We know. We all know. <laughs> um, and so the, I have this joke in it. We're basically being, I'm like, it's not like, it's basically talking about like pulling out. Uh, and I'm like, oh, it's just a normal joke. It's a funny joke. Uh, and all the comments started that were like, oh, yeah, you know, hey, funny. This is funny. A couple of tags, some emojis. And then after like a week, it started getting into, yeah, well, pulling out's not actually a very safe method. And then it goes on to like, yeah, men are actually kind of disgusting for doing this thing. And it's just evolved into this like huge, like argumentative forum about about pregnancy. And you're like, all right, cool. Like, this now wasn't I'm supposed it. to be sex ed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't, I wasn't trying to teach you guys something. I was you can like, actually, you could actually pinpoint like because sometimes videos go viral a second time. Yeah, just somehow, and sometimes I mean you kind of have to time it or, or or do it preempt it. But in the first seven to fourteen days, you can take a snapshot of the analytics of which countries have been most popular in, and then. If it starts to go re-viral, you can go back to those analytics and yeah. have a look and you can calculate which countries have boomed. Yeah. It's always a different place. Yeah. I, uh, a, l a lot of people in India don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I, like <laughs> I, have a, I have a pretty decent follow in Sweden. People in Sweden like me, probably because I look like I'm Yeah, you look like there. a Nordic man. Um, but I made this joke uh, and I, I got like 10% like of my following is from India which is, is great because it's a different country. You know, I'd like be exposed to new things, but also it kind of sucks because like, people think I bought some of my followers now <laughs> because like every now and then, like a bunch of my comments would just be from Indian people. And I'm like, it looks like I bought these people. It's a sus suspiciously high yeah. weighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, there's a lot of Rashids coming yeah. in on Rory's stuff. Um, and so I made this joke because I did some shows in Pakistan 
right? Wow. And while we were there, we like learned a bunch about the like history of Pakistan and like, you know, went to museums, went on tours and stuff like that. And uh, we found out that Pakistan and India were the same country, like back in the day. Uh, and when the English came over and like colonized it, like it, and put them in a position, they kind of fell out, the country split and like, you know, basically the joke is uh, whenever I like talk to someone and I'm like, where are you from? And they go, India. I'm like, awesome. I have this joke in my head where I go, oh, that's cool. I've been to Pakistan once. And the whole crowd <laughs> just goes, Ooh, <laughs> like, like, oh, he's, he's racist. That's not the same place. And I'm, and I'm like, well, it used to be the same place, didn't it? And always the Indian person is like, yeah, it actually used to be the same country. And I'm like, yeah. And then you guys fell out, like you had beef, right? And then I go, well, you didn't have beef. <laughs> You're Indian. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the main difference between India and Pakistan is obviously that Pakistanis, like they eat meat. Yeah. while you know, the Indians like worship cows so yeah. they don't eat beef. And it's a smart joke. It's a high level joke. Yeah. It's, in like you know, like, right over the white people's heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people love the joke. So I put this on. I put this on uh, Instagram. Uh, Instagram. All the comments, all from Indian people and Pakistani people, being like, "This is so funny. This is amazing." Like, uh, uh, and they're they're writing more things in there, like telling me more about the history. And I'm like, "Oh, cool engagement." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like learning about like how like some pilot from like Pakistan, like during like one of their <laughs> wars, like crashed and like ended up in India. And like instead of them putting him in prison, they like took him back to like chill at one of the houses and like made him some tea. And so Must like, have been a Buddhist. One. Yeah, so they were like, oh man, like, <laughs> do you know the story about the tea? And so there's like a thousand comments being like, the tea, the tea story, the tea. I'm yeah. like, what's this? So I looked it up. I was like, oh, I've learned some cool stuff. And then I put it up on like TikTok. And again, it must have hit the wrong side. And they're like, yeah, the reason I split up is because of you, you English piece of shit, dude. <laughs> Colonizer, you white dog. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. All right. Didn't learn anything from this. Yeah, my bad, guys. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I won't do it again. I am white. I am the devil. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't around back then, but yes, please blame mm. me for, you know, all, yeah. all the all the wrongdoings. And that's that's another example of like people people being going, oh yeah, you know, I'm offended at like, this joke. And you're like, yeah, but it's not. You know, it's not. Well, well, it's, it's like not, that. It's not um, hate. It's like that sick clip of um, a US guy went to different colleges dressed as different, like stereotypical, like ethnicities. That's a great clip. And then going back to um, like those, like oh those yeah, people. the Mexican. I mean, yeah, like yeah. oh, like the Chinese, like like and she's, he's like, how do I look? And she's like, you look really nice, thank you. And then he goes to the college. It's like it's really offensive. You're like uh, appropriating their culture. And it's like. They yeah. like it. They love it. Yeah. Yeah, they love it. I mean to a certain extent, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Like yeah. not sticky taping your eyes. I can't go to I can't yeah. go to a Mexican restaurant and eat them their food. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I'm not off. gonna black up and go to Harlem. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black so, up. so now that you're um you you've been around, you've been to America, Pakistan, <laughs> India. You've been to India? No, I haven't done any gigs in India. I've done uh, I've done America, Pakistan. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, um, England, uh, Scotland, so like the UK. What was being home like? In like in England, yeah. in England. I do. I really don't like England. Okay. Like I like the people I, or the country. Just like the country and a lot of the people, man. Sometimes, like I, there's there's just such a level of like patriotism. Someone's clipping the shit out of this and putting it out of context. <laughs> By the way, he's like, I, I hate English people. You're fucked. Fucked. I'm the one clipping it. <laughs> You're fucked. Um, no, there's like, the, uh, there's just a level of patriotism. I don't, I don't really like patriotism and like nationalism. I like, I like pride in your country. I yeah. like, I like you being like, oh, I support my country, stuff like that. But I think England has, kind of has this like post like empire kind of like arrogance. I don't get the whole obsession with monarchy. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I don't. I, Why? Oh, I really don't. Like really vicariously like living through someone that's just been spawned in with everything. I mean, you can clip this. I've been mean, me on this one, but I don't want to get run a country by a bunch of inbred pedos. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't. <laughs> I don't. And that's what it is. Like there's two arguments when it comes to the monarchy, right? People go, oh, well, I mean, they don't actually do anything. We have like a prime minister and we kind of elect him and he makes most of the decisions. Yeah, they've delegated their work yeah, so, to some guy. So it, like, you know, they don't even really do anything. So they don't have any power. So they're okay. Well, it's like, well, if, we, if they don't do anything, why do we still have them? 
Why do they live in a, a gold-plated castle and have all these jewels and crowns while people can't pay their electrical bills and all these old people and, who have been jipped out their pension and can't afford food? Yeah. Like, why is that the situation? I agree. And it's like, all right, cool. Well, that's one argument being debunked. And then the other argument is, well, actually, they do loads of stuff and they, they still are pulling big strings behind the scenes and they're actually quite influential and it's a great thing. And you're like, well, if they're doing that, why are we being led by one particular family that seems to keep it all in themselves, like it's Game of Thrones, and then we have no like sort of electoral or democ democratic kind of say in it. It's pretty much just a dictatorship, but instead of one guy, it's a family. And you're like, all right, cool. So both of those arguments that people have say that we shouldn't have them and don't need them. And like, let's be honest, the only reason we still have them is tourism. Like that's, that's all it is. It's like, you want to come to Buckingham Palace. You want to look at the thing that like England needs to make tourism that has some sort of like money income. It's only 50 million pounds. What is? The tourism for the royal family. I looked it up. Is that what it is? 50 yeah, million? It's only 50 million pounds, which yeah. seems like fuck all. That's still something. I mean, well, yeah. Uh, but hang like, on, I'm about to search how much their tax cuts are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. Like they're, they're not paying tax, bro. No, no, no. no. I mean, how much they avoid? Oh yeah, man. Well, I mean, like all, like literally everything that all the all the all the jewels on the crown are all stolen from Africa, man. Like you know what I mean. All the all the artifacts in the museum are all stolen from Egypt or like you know wherever they are. <laughs> like, that's it, what English people are. Back. No, <laughs> English people are just really good at stealing shit. <laughs> so where's where's a country that you've um, you, you've always wanted to go and do a gig at? And you haven't yet. Um, uh, I want to go. To, I want to go to Japan. Oh, okay. you want to go to Japan? I think that'd be cool. Um, I want to go to uh, Austria. I want to go to Vienna. Um, and I want to go to Egypt. I want to go see the pyramids. Yeah. Yeah. Like I love, I like, I love Egypt. Like mythology. Some good architecture there. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there's yeah. some crazy stuff. Do you have theories of how they did that? The pyramids? Yeah. Um, I guess I'm one, I'm one of the guys that's like, oh, I reckon they built it ages ago. And then there was some sort of like natural disaster and just sent everyone back into the, like the stone age. No, I meant like how do they can, oh, so yeah. So, yeah, they, I reckon, so, I, so they got up to the level of yeah, intelligence. I reckon they were smarter than us. Like a reset. Yeah. I reckon too many work people. And then they were like, fuck this reset. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that they probably had a civilization that was just as advanced as this. Yeah. Like they, I reckon they had like microphones and like, you know, rockets and all sorts. And they were driving around in cars or some version of that. Just with yeah. a lot more slavery. Well, that's the thing. I don't think, I don't really even think they had slavery. Like, I mean, if, say someone found our society now, you know what I mean? And they were like, oh, who built this thing? Well, the only way they could have done this. And the only way they could have done this is like, well, how how they do it? It's like, oh, well, they got a bunch of people and they were like, oh, we're going to get them from this time to this time and we're going to make them do it. And like, if you look at our kind of, what we're doing at the, like at the moment, it's like, you know, minimum wage, working class, the matrix, you, you know, the matrix, yeah. like give that, give that another 50 years. Let's get, let's say we get a little bit more advanced. Say we get AI and stuff like that. Right. And now there's just a bunch of people out of work who need stuff. You, we get lucky. We create some sort of universal income and like blah, blah. Like you've got a bunch of people that are working. Make them feel like they're free. Yeah. Make them feel like they're free. Like <laughs> yeah. we, we don't like, everyone's like, oh yeah. You know, like in everyone's heads, like everyone's just wearing a long cloth getting whipped. You know what I mean? Like in ancient Egypt where you're like, really? You think that we're getting... You really reckon they were getting whipped? Now it's no. whipped by hex yeah. debt in indexation. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, like, let's be honest. Like, like you find a railroad here. Mm. That's how we did it. You know what I mean? Like you find any, any big mine that we dug gold out of. That's pretty much how we did it. Like we look at what we did to the, like the indigenous and the Japanese and the Chinese to get pearls out of the, out of the, out of the broom in the North, North West. Yeah. Like we've, <laughs> we've been doing all that shit for years anyway. It's the same as what they've been doing. Got a good track record, eh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, sure. And so I reckon genuinely, I think the pyramids were built by like a very advanced civilization. And then I think there was some sort of natural disaster, uh, a, like a global kind of cataclysm thing, some glo global warming stuff that kind of like wiped out technology. Like it could say we a big earthquake or a big tidal wave hits us. Like, do you know how to, this thing works? Yeah. You, think you know how, you, you reckon you can build a microphone? Oh, uh, I mean, Or a YouTube. computer? <laughs> yeah, or like a, a light bulb? Yeah, very I don't true. know how anything works, bro. Yeah, you just go to the shop. Yeah, exactly, but there ain't, ain't none left now, you know? Shops, shops closed, shops underwater, and so it's now just a bunch of dudes in a cave trying to make a fire again. 
Like, Very true. You know, and I think that's all that happened. I think there was just a little bit of a climate reset and like all these crazy cool structures that had already been built from these societies that were already quite far ahead. Like you look at how immaculate those things are and the Sphinx is. Well, the like, Mayans as well. The Mayans and yeah. like the, the Easter Island heads mm. and like, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Rockingham train station. Uh, Globitechi. What, how do you pronounce it? Uh, uh Globia Techie or something like that. It's it's like old. It's older than the older than the pyramids. It's like five thousand years older than the pyramids, and it's like still this whole this. Uh, it's called like Ghibliotechie or something like that. Well, they figured out that that uh, this is my like prediction, but the stone, the rock formations, the pyramids made of all of that yeah. um, resource, they knew would disintegrate. Um, a lot. It would take a lot longer to disintegrate. Yeah, it's made out of granite. It's made out. It's right. made like, and granite lasts yeah. longer than anything else in the in in the world. Yeah. So like, and then, but if we have our towers, they're made of glass and they're made of um, aluminium and yeah. steel and shit. That di disintegrates yeah. a lot quicker. Oh, dude! Like the, I would, the only evidence would, that we were here is probably like heaps of plastic bags. You know what I mean? Like that's probably like that's the probably vapes. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a bunch of <laughs> bunch of vapes. Just, you know, in like twenty thousand years that we digging stuff up. Like, oh, look at this this slave tool that they had. You know, like nah, man, we were just puffing on those bad boys <laughs> all day long. Yeah, the um, and the, my grandpa, he uh, he always said, like, this is a bit morbid, but make the uh, tombstones out of this rock and chisel the rock because they will be. There later than everybody else. Yeah, it, it, granite, man. Granite. Yeah. it's the it's the most like uh, it's the strongest material. It doesn't decay over time. Like yeah. that's what the pyramids made but build, of. But build build a granite tower here. How much would that cost? More than you know the the towers are making now. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. And like, you, like that's why we make out of like glass and steel because it's cheaper than like getting stone basin to come in and do the thing. Yeah, and like you you look at the. I love, I love this, man. It's just like, just two white dudes on a podcast talking about the pyramids. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, like, that's why I want to go. I want to look at the pyramids. I, like, I, like I said, I still love architecture so much. And that's why I want to go to like Austria. I want to go to Vienna because that's where modern architecture pretty much is a birth yeah. from. Like all of the coolest stuff uh, all kind of came from Austrian architects. I mean, the Greeks did it as yeah. well. And um, yeah, I, so now that you're, uh, now that you're here, now that we're, uh, all that shit's behind us, hopefully. Yeah. Um, going forward, uh, going back to Sydney, doing your tours and that, where do you kind of see yourself in terms of your goals um, in the next kind of 12 months beyond? Yeah, like next two years I want to start, I want to be doing theatres again. Yeah. I, want to, I want to be able to do with a, a sold out theatre, a thousand people in each, each city. Yeah. Maybe not Adelaide or Hobart because – they just don't buy tickets. <laughs> I just swear to God, man. I'm like, I'm like about to cancel my shows in Adelaide because it's like, it's like the biggest room in the whole tour. And I think I've sold two tickets. Mm. Like there's like five tickets left for Perth, five tickets left for like Gold Coast, five tickets left for Melbourne, Brisbane, yeah. Sydney. Like we're adding extra shows for like all these cities. And then Adelaide's like, you have sold 1% of your tickets. And I'm like, man, what, what, do, you think, what do you think that is? You have like a funny theory for Adelaide? I feel like it's 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 just different kettle of fish, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, cause Sydney and Sydney and um, like Gold Coast, Brisbane, Melbourne, like there's stuff going on. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, I feel like <laughs> Adelaide's got nothing. I feel like yeah, well, Adelaide doesn't have much, and also I, I I don't feel like they have a way of even finding out. You know what I mean? I don't even know if they got reception out there, but I swear to God, like, cause cause you go in March, go if you want to go to Adelaide, go in March. Oh, it's amazing! It's the best best place to be in the whole country is Adelaide in March. Why is that? Uh, Fringe Festival, uh, Warm Ad Festival, like the V8 Supercars, like there's a bunch of music festivals on, there's Writers Festival, there's like Flower Festival. Uh, like they put every cultural event <clears throat> in one month from the whole year <clears throat> and they put it, they put it and they call it Mad March. And so like people fly in, they close the streets down, like the, they close the whole city down. Like they barricade it off so no cars can come in and they just have street performer festival and busking festivals. And so it's just this vibrant, huge city with like, they have a vivid, they have their own vivid, like light festival going yeah. on at the same time. It's incredible. Maybe you should do a one-off show in March then. Yeah, I probably should. And then, and then hit a buzz there. And then when you do another national tour, they'll remember you hopefully. Yeah. Uh, for, for Tasmania, Hobart, I, 
I don't I don't have a clue. I love the place. Uh, dude, um, Hobart has some of the best food in the whole yeah. joint. And like it's And it's not that expensive either. It's pretty it's cheap. Not, it's beautiful too, man. It's like it's it's like it's it's stuck in like this perfect time almost. Like people are just chilling and walking around, similar to Perth, but it's got like a different style of weather and it's very hilly and it's beautiful. Yeah. I feel like I'm like a, every time I go to like Tassie, I'm like, I'm back in the eighties. I love Hobart. I need, yeah. I need to get a team of, of teens and we're all going to get some BMXs and we're going to stop a golf course from getting built on our parents' blocks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm in the Goonies every time I go, go, go to Hobart. Yeah. Um, once you, once you start your, uh, sell out shows again, the next two years, um, and then obviously international again. Yeah. Um, what is your kind of like plan from there? I mean, obviously I, I live day by day in these days and whatever happens, happens. Do you have like an ultimate goal? Yeah. So, uh, it's going to sound like very, very, I guess like basic, but it's like, I want to, I just want to have a room <laughs> with a whiteboard in it and like a long, yeah, you've already got one here, like a long table with just a bunch of funny people at like side this table and I want to stand in front of them all and go, this is our idea. This is what we're going to do. Let's all do this thing. And like, I want to make cartoons. Like I really want to make cartoons. I've already wrote scripts for cartoons and stuff like that. And like, that's kind of where I want to have, like I want to be able to do like maybe, you know, 20 or 30 big theater shows across wherever, um, you know, maybe three a weekend for, what, 10 weeks and that's, you know. That's your work that, done. That's, that's my uh, comedy. And then for the rest of the time, just kind of sit around and just like shoot ideas off with a bunch of creative people. Yeah. And we're like, all right, well now we've got this, let's pass on this fleshed out idea to whoever makes the thing. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's the framework and the jokes and the structure. Like here's how I want it drawn. Like here's the thing. There you go, I guess. AI computers, go make the thing now. Like that's the level that I would love to be at. Yeah. Just that. to have creative freedom and financial freedom. Like I don't want, I mean, it'd be nice to do a stadium show, you know, once. It'd yeah. be nice to do 40,000 40, people. As Tracy said, I want to see 40,000 people just to see what I'm on. But like, I don't want that all the time. You know what I mean? No, I don't, I, I, like Kevin Hart-esque fame. No, thank you. That's just too much. Like even looking at like the side man and KSI and like Logan Paul and you're like, you see that the, they're closing down streets with like, you know, yeah. people coming or I don't need. I don't it'd be need fun that. once, but it'd be madness all the time. Like I go to Joondalup shops and I'm like, everyone just stops and just like lines up and takes photos. Yeah. It's crazy. And like, that's, that's awesome. That's great. It's great. Yeah. But like the last thing you want is like two things. You don't want your, your whole life to be, impacted no. to the point where like you, you no longer have your life. You're, you're just every, uh, everyone else's disposal. Yeah. And you don't want the come down from it. Yeah. Like the, like it, the Bojack Horseman lifestyle, bro. I don't want that. You know, no. I don't want to be so high up and then obviously, you know, someone else has got to come and take that. And then someone else has got to come and take that. Yeah. You, know, you can't just be on top forever. You kind of want to play with, with uh, house money. Yeah. And if something pops, you're like, great. Cool, yeah. but I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got the same, similar similar yeah. goals. I would love to be cameo level famous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not like not like movie star famous, but just like, man, this guy keeps popping up in all these like kind of things. Sort of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could see, like you wouldn't know it's T-Pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> you you like, want that when someone's watching something, you're like, oh, that's the guy from, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Yeah. You want yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I want people to come on and be like, oh, you're the dude from the thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want people to be up like, oh my God, Rory Law. I love doing this, 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 yeah. this, this, this. I don't want everyone Kinda to do like that. Kind of like Adam Sandler's mates in every one of his movies. Yeah. I'd love to be like Rob Schneider or like <laughs> David Spade yeah, like yeah. level. You know, yeah. even though I guess like they were fucking huge at one point. Yeah. yeah. But like, I don't want to be Adam Sandler famous. No. No. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, it'd be cool to be in a movie. I'd love to be in a movie. Yeah. Um, or like a TV show or something like that. It'd be cool. Um, but also like I've been on sets before. Like it's not fun. No. Like it's hours. Oh, dude. Acting is awful. Mm. Like, even, like I, I've even filmed like even just like for for like commercials and stuff. I film commercials, and they're like, "All right, cool, uh, you know, go to this, this, this." Now just wait here for four and a half hours, 
uh, while we do this other thing. But don't go anywhere because we might need you. And don't like, touch your face. Don't touch anything. Yeah. And like, hey, be quiet. Like, don't make any noise because we can hear you. And then go to your caravan. Not a, don't even have a caravan. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, it, it'd be fun to do a couple of times. But I definitely, yeah, wouldn't mm. want to be in it forever. So but then got, again, that's now. You know, my goals might change. Yeah. So you got you got the kids listening and uh, you know aspiring to become young comedians or creatives or maybe even architects. Um, what's the overall advice that you would give to a young fella, young or young Sheila coming up to, you know, just keep going? Have fun. Yeah. That's the main thing. Just have fun. If you have fun, everything will fall into place. Yeah. A hundred percent. Everything would fall into place, man. Like, cause that's it. That's all, that's all it's all about. That's why you did it in the first place because you enjoyed it and you liked it. And so if you maintain a childlike energy towards the thing that you enjoy doing, you will never, you'll, ne you'll never lose that. And you'll never, you'll never really struggle because mm. you're like, wherever you're at, you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you battle the bell curve of doing something for fun, enjoying it, getting good at it, and then getting to the top, which is in my opinion, you start becoming a professional, mm. you're getting paid for it. And then from there, you kind of got two ways to go about it. You keep going with that, get more and more money, and then people are in demand of you to perform, to deliver. Yeah. And then it no longer feels like your passion anymore. How do you navigate that? Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess my, my personality is kind of just like I just want to have fun. Like I don't know when I'm going to go. Like one of my like my best friend Lucas, he he died like a couple of years ago. Uh, and like you know, he was young. He was like you know, twenty six, and like crashed his car into a tree. You know what I mean? Like just that boom. One day I woke up message like from like his German girlfriend who like barely speaks English. It's like Lucas dead, car crash, neck broke. Sorry, like that was the message. And I'm like, wow. And I'm just like out like with my mates. And like one of those things, it's just like, I don't know when I'm going to go, man. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know when it's going to happen. And so like, all I want is at the end of the day, it's like, you know, when I've got all those people are like around at like the funeral is I just want them all to go, man, he, he took it. He took everything. Like he lived his life. He had so much fun. He didn't miss a minute of fun. And that's all, that's all I want. And if you put too much pressure on yourself and too much expectation to be this like great thing, this, uh, this ambition and this ideology you have of what you want, like you, you're going to lose the fun. You know, if you want to be Kevin Hart, you know, if you want, like I want stadiums, I want people to see this. I want, I want all these people to see how good I am. You, you're going to, you're going to hate it. Yeah. You know, because exactly. that's not, that's not the reason you should be doing it. That's not your why. Like your why should be, I love this or I'm doing it for this reason. You know, I'm like, I want to change. I want to change the world. I want to influence people. I want to have fun. You know, I want to make people's lives happier. It shouldn't be, I, I want this and I need this. It, that those wants and needs should be a consequence of the fun. Yeah. The byproduct. Having. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I believe. That's excellent. Well, that's a good note to leave it on. And um, let's let's do the official plug. How do we come and purchase the two remaining tickets for the cities and the other ninety nine percent still available in yeah. Adelaide? Even if you're not in Adelaide, just <laughs> buy some tickets for Adelaide, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just buy some tickets for Adelaide. Help a guy out. Yeah. Um, do the 50 cent thing. And, yeah. and <laughs> oh, dude, I would love one of my enemies to just go and be like, oh, we bought out the whole like front row for Adelaide. I'm just stoked. I'd be stoked, dude. Um, no, uh, all my tickets are at www.rorylawcomedy.com. Uh, I'm here in Perth uh, on the 25th of July. Uh, and I reckon that's going to sell out in like the next week or oh, two. Easy, especially when the podcast drops. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big dog. In the um, uh, in the description, all you need uh, is in there. So pop that in and yeah. go. And, and if you are younger and you do want to come, um, I'm pretty certain for the Perth one, uh, if you come with a parent, you're okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's like MA 15 plus, I guess. Like yeah. it's in a pub, but like kids can go in there and eat food. So like, I guess like, you know, it's the comedy club upstairs at the, at the Brizzy. So it's at Oasis. So yeah. kids can go in there and eat with their family. So I assume they can come upstairs and watch the show. Um, 
And it's the early one as well here. So it's like 6.30 start, I think. What are your supporting acts? Um, I haven't booked I haven't booked any yet, but pro I'll probably get Wolfie on yep. for Perth. And if I do two, I'll probably get Wolfie on for one. And then, um, I don't know, Emo, if he's in town, I really yeah. like Emo. Um, but I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to get support, a different support act for every show. Um, and what's really nice, man, is that, like a few people hit me up. Like, like yeah. yeah, a few like open micers from like the Gold Coast and like, even someone, dude, even motherfucking Adelaide hit me up. I was like, man, like, can you just buy a ticket and come instead? <laughs> <laughs> if you buy a ticket, I'll consider you. Yeah. So just just to extend a little bit now from some more ideas I have. Yeah. Um, I don't I'm, have to go anywhere, bro. I'm usually asleep still. <laughs> Excellent. So <laughs> if you have an open micer yeah. uh, approach you to open for you, what are the three things that get you across the line saying, yeah, no problem. Let's give it a crack. Well, first thing, just ask. Okay. Because like most, like that's how I got a lot of gigs that I never thought I'd get. Is I was just I just ask I'd like what I used to do is I used to like I would like try and open up for Dave Chappelle when I was like three years in shoot your shot you know it. what I mean yeah hundred percent like I'd go it's a lot easier now because of LinkedIn you can go on or go on LinkedIn and just find out who's doing the the tour managing or like yeah, who's doing the, the the production company or whoever's coming in and then just email them and be like hey I'm this person I do comedy here's a here's a video. Like, uh, I'd love to open up or if not, uh, would love to hang out. I'll show you around the city or whatever. So like the modern day demo tapes. Yeah, pretty much, man. Just stand yeah. outside the front of that, that, that record executive's house and keep playing your tunes for them. Um, and I reckon I must have messaged like 20 major comics that came, like were coming to Perth. Uh, and then, uh, 2017, I got to open up for Bert. Yeah. So I reckon I was emailing people for what, like two years like Dave Chappelle, uh, like Bill Burr, Burt Kreischer, like Flight of the Concords, like anyone that was coming, I just hit them up, see if I can get on. And eventually, you know, one of them hit. Um, and then he took you around. Yeah, and then he took us around. Yeah. It's all it takes. Yeah. Shoot your shot, show up, keep posting, keep trying and, and ask. Yeah, always, yeah, ask. Ask the main thing. There's not like a list of things like, oh, say this word or like, you know, be this or do this. It's like, man, just keep asking. Yeah. Like old mate, um, Mark Norman's in town right now and uh, a fantastic comic uh, called James McCann. He's opening up for him for the whole thing. And he he messaged me like maybe a year ago. He was like, man, I'm trying to get this gig with this guy. Like, how did you get yours with, with old mate? And I was like, oh, this is what I did. He's like, man, that's so simple. You just you just asked him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. He was like, oh my god. And yeah. then you know, like six months later, he's got this gig now. And um, I don't know how he's got it specifically, but I know that he's been sending emails around and trying to get these things. And now he's in that spot. Um, so like, just keep doing your own thing, keep working hard, and keep asking. Because if you eventually do get the opportunity, you also need to be good enough to 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 rise to the occasion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You need to have the good product, but then you start marketing it. If it's a good product already, yeah, it comes in clutch. Yeah. So. And that's the thing, man, 10, 10 years for overnight success. You work on that thing for 10 years and then one day someone gives you a shot mm. and then everyone goes, man, you just made it in one night. You're like, nah, no, I worked in the dark for 10 years. You know, I mm. wrote for 14 hours in, off a couch, you know, with like cockroaches, like going around and rats going around. And, I did, you know, yeah. and then one day you get your shot, you take your shot. You're like, man, I came from the start from the bottom, baby. And then you end up where you're at. And it's a, uh, it, it all looks so easy when you look back on it. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your greatest comic of all time? Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. No one knows who he is. No. No, he's called Patrice O'Neill. He's got a special on, uh, on YouTube. It's called the elephant in the room. It's hands down the best special. I've ever seen in my entire life. Guys, he's like Jay-Z. He never wrote a joke down. He never wrote. He was he like, just he, went for it. he just got up there and just said the truth. <sighs> and like, he's one of the guys that like, like when we, when you talk about political correctness and people being like, you can't say that. This guy, he was like, I'm just telling the truth all the time. And if you get mad at it, you get mad at it, but it's the truth. So that's your issue. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Mine, mine would be, I grew up on Jim Carrey movies. Yeah. Jim Carrey all the time. And now he's like kind of all this like super I like it, supernatural man. being. I love that shit. And um the other one's Robin Williams. Um he's oh, always man. he's always wanting to just just 
pull a joke out no matter yeah. what the situation. And um, and if you look at both yeah. of those dudes, all they want to do is have fun. Yeah. Like all that's they right. want to do is have fun. That's it. So that's it, kids. Go have fun. Enjoy yourself. Live your life. Shout outs to uh, Roy for being here and uh, good luck on the tour. Shout outs to uh, this. How'd you find Hunt and Brew? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's just, you know, it's just milk. <laughs> a bit of coffee in there. Yeah, it's milk and coffee. I was yeah. like, oh, now a little spicy water. <laughs> a little spicy water. Bit of static water. Uh, as always, shout out to Bright Tank on the, uh, on the left nip there. Um, hit them up if you're in uh, Perth or just trial their beers. <laughs> They're nationally award-winning now with the uh, best lager in Australia. So, uh, you know, shout-outs to them. And, uh, yeah, go see Rory. If you don't, go watch him online and uh, buy his Adelaide tickets. And if you have any questions about the uh, episode on the Spotify, you can now comment. If you don't have Spotify, uh, go on to YouTube. If you don't have YouTube, then the fuck. All right. <laughs> thanks always, for having me, man. No worries. Good thanks.